Good evening, Life Group families. We're so glad we're all together again and getting ready to study the Word and learn more about God's purpose for the church and God's plan from the beginning. And I'm super excited about this week's message, um, learning about specific revelation, general revelation, and uh, us being watchmen on the wall. Amen. Uh, you know, uh, of course, Sunday, and you guys heard the study, so we don't need to go through the whole thing, but uh, just the difference between... Uh, you know, God generally revealing himself to all men through creation, and then God in a very specific way revealing himself through the gospel, uh, and that man cannot be saved unless they hear the gospel. Sounds like a pretty obvious right. truth, but it's actually not. There's many believers, there's many churches that really haven't thought through it, uh, to be honest, but just think, oh, well, you know, all those people that have, haven't heard, um, you know, somehow... God's grace will cover them and they can be saved. But, you know, the reality is, is throughout the whole scripture, um, we see like the whole New Testament. I mean, the entire New Testament is about faith, is about believe, it's about being a disciple. None of those things could happen uh, if someone doesn't hear the gospel. What are you going to believe in? Of course, that's what we looked at in Romans chapter 10, what Paul says there in verses 14 and 15, that, you know, how can they hear without a preacher, but he starts by saying, how can, you know, they, um, they, they, you know, believe unless they hear and how can they, they hear unless someone tells them and how can someone tell them unless someone is sent to them. So we just see again, the, the church being the hub to the nations and the need uh, to bring the gospel. And yeah. The word says very clearly that we must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. Right. Salvation comes through belief. But how do you believe in Jesus if you don't hear the gospel? And I feel like sometimes people just, like you said, didn't really think about it. Or mm -hmm. once they're forced to think about it, they don't know how to, to grapple with yeah. it. It's really hard for them to understand that actually people have to hear the yeah. gospel. I mean, Jesus came so that people can be saved because it's necessary for the blood of Jesus to be applied to our lives in order for us to be in heaven. So this is a very important, important fact for us Amen. to really get ingrained in our mind and walk away with because then we get to the watchman, right? It's our responsibility, then it's the church's responsibility to preach the gospel yeah. to every nation, yeah, to every you creature. Know, it, I mean, if it's true that um, people that have never heard, yeah. you know, could be saved by general create you know revelation through creation then it'd be better for us not to go share with them right because now we're holding them clearly accountable it's not like they can just kind of say if there's a god out there uh you know we believe in you uh, and be saved but if we then send missionaries and we preach the gospel now people are accountable uh and now they they have to repent and if they don't for indeed uh that kind of seals them for judgment you know, so that's a crazy argument to say, and obviously it blows all outreach, not just missions, but why would we even uh, okay. share the gospel with our, our friends? Right. But of course, uh, you know, uh, Ezekiel 33 tells yes. us clearly uh, that we're watchmen. And, you know, the great important point for us to remember in that passage is that as watchmen, uh, we are called by God to warn them. That's the word that's repeated over and that's over. Right. Warn that's them. That's our job. And our and their blood uh, will you know will be clean of their blood, meaning the the guilt of their sin will not be upon us. The guilt of them not having the opportunity won't be upon us. It but will the, be upon them. And the opposite's true. That right. if we don't preach the gospel, then their blood is on our right. hands, and then we are guilty. Right. And so we saw Paul says this twice in, in the book of Acts that I'm clean, I'm innocent of the blood of all men, both in Acts 18 and Acts chapter 20. You know, so uh, I think it's so important for us to remember that uh, because, you know, he says, woe is me, you know, in, in 1 Corinthians 9. You know, woe is me if I don't preach the gospel. Necessity lays upon me. Yeah. You know, that's th this is the thing that we need to see, you know. And, and so, you know, tonight what our encouragement to you guys is really to kind of Talk about ways that we hear, not just missionally, but we hear as the church are being a watchman on the wall, are being a light to uh, the nation, um, are being a light to, you know, our nation. Of course, right now during the elections and who knows when we're going to hear who won the presidency. Uh, maybe by tonight you guys will know, maybe we won't. But regardless, our job doesn't change. 
no matter who you voted for, who you want, whatever, our calling is, is steadfast. Yeah. Second Corinthians chapter five says that we're ambassadors for Christ yeah. as though God is pleading through us. Our, our job is to reconcile, to reconcile people to God. But how do we do that? We do that by preaching the gospel. Now, we, that's just our job. We don't have to save them. We're just to be ambassadors. Right. We're just to be the, the herald, right. the voice. Yep. But we're not, it's not our job to save people. We can't save people. They have to choose, God saves them, but our job is to be ambassadors and to open our mouths and share the gospel because yeah. how can they hear unless somebody preaches And that's really them. important, that we, we are not the savior of the world. Yes. Jesus is. Uh, we don't need to manipulate people, get angry with people, get uh, overly you know frustrated with people. We just lovingly share the gospel with them and it's between them and the Lord. Amen. So, you know, just kind of, Debbie, maybe a couple ways of practically how we do that in our life here in you know orange county yeah we just look for opportunities pray every single day that god would open up doors share with our friends and family share with the people that come to your front door my kids have seen me many times yep. share with people that come to my front door the, sa the salesmen like come yeah. and debbie always you know i usually don't want to open the door but debbie's like oh they're here and she opens the door yeah and, it's like oh they're trapped they're yeah. here they gotta listen so, so you know i yeah. just i would encourage you guys on uh, an airplane yeah. in in the waiting for your car to be washed sharing having gospel tracks with you all the time sharing the gospel looking for ways to pray for people to be an impact in their lives using social media for the furtherance of the gospel there's so many ways we can share yeah. the gospel right here and now yeah and you know i would really encourage you guys also to befriend someone uh, you know, there's the, the proclamation, like the passing on tracks and, the, you know, like all the things you just said kind of is we're interacting in life, you know, where we can share the gospel. But uh, there's also, uh, you know, those people you prayed for and say, God, put them on my heart. And then, OK, now I'm going to go and I'm going to build a relationship with the goal of sharing the gospel with them and, and really w being a witness of Jesus because they need to see that. They need to see that this is Jesus. This is what a Christian is. Many people think they know what a Christian is in America, but they right. don't really know what a Christian is. And so really kind of to invade their life to, you know, with gifts of love, yeah. you know, that's always sure. a great way and just minister to them. So we just pray that you guys, uh, you know, would be stirred up uh, tonight. And uh, remember as we share the gospel and we reach someone, because we've been talking a lot about discipleship, we then get to disciple them. So we want to do that. Amen. Uh, you know, encourage you guys, you know, have you ever, and here's a question I'll end with, have you ever shared the gospel? Have you ever had the opportunity to lead someone to Christ? And if so, have you then pursued them in a relationship of discipleship? Because Jesus said, go and make disciples of all nations. So we're very excited about, uh, you know, what God wants to do in our church as we begin to bring people that we've been sharing with to church. Mm -hmm. And maybe they're already saved because you've led them to the Lord or they're close. And this is kind of the, the final sealing of that. So uh, just excited about what God wants to do. Love you guys, praying for you. And uh, you may God bless uh, our great United States of America.